This is the SRC Toe Tip Lancia. Was the one that uh, they just sent me a little more than a week ago. And I figured it was time to do a little track test on this guy, open it up, see what it's all about. I've already mentioned in the previous uh, news video where I talked briefly about this car. Um, it's the detail on this is just staggering. The level of finish on this car is as good as I have ever seen on any car ever by any company. Uh, it's it, the, the colors are great. The tampo printing is fantastic. The quality of the mold is amazing. Um, looks like there's some photo etch on here, which is pretty rare these days. Uh, let's open this guy up, see if there's any surprises. Oh, oh boy, is there ever a surprise. There's, there's the most intricate model of a motor I, I am sure I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, there are hoses, as you can see. There are, there's ductwork. Um, this is absolutely stunning. How is this guy attached in there? Is this, oh, it's screwed down. Oh boy. And can you get to these screws? Not very easily. Okay. Well, looks like we have the same kind of rear end on this one that we had on the, um, the Porsche. Um, there's an adjustable front, the front axle, these are metal wheels, they're a little too close. Let's spin those, we shouldn't do that, but, oh, that's right, this is a band drive. Okay, um, yeah, that's the other thing, it's a band drive, it's four-wheel drive, which is very cool. Uh, all four tires seem, seem really, really sticky, which is nice. Um... It is a bit of a problem, however, that unless these parts come out, and I'm not sure if they do, you can't get to the motor easily because there's a screw, and the screw is under. Let's see if you can actually see this here. The screw is actually under, the screw head is under a de piece of detail. Um, well, in any case... Uh, this level of detail is just stunning to me. The car looks really, really nice. Uh, it's a long can motor. It's an open motor. It's a 17,000 RPM motor. Sounds good to me. It's got a lot of torque, 230 gram centimeters of torque. That's very cool. There's no pod, of course, but, you know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's okay. Um, what do we have in the interior? Uh, pretty interesting interior. Of course, there's a bulkhead right here. And there's uh, some detail even in there. Yeah, this is, uh, and there's some nice photo etch. The the grill and the, and the, the hood there. Um, just an absolutely stunning, stunning model from these guys. I'm going to get some oil on this guy, get out on the track and see what it, uh, see what it does. Okay, so before I got it on the track, <laughs> I figured I really would take this apart, get it oiled, uh, give you a view uh, at the gear in the back, which is, as I thought, a uh, sprung rear axle like they had in the uh, the previous, uh, the, the uh, 914, the Chrono 914 that I have. Um, it's a pretty interesting rear axle setup. Again, these are all metal wheels. Um, the motor is screwed in to the chassis, which I love, love, love that they've done this. It's a high quality rear gear and axle. Feels really good. This uh, this is some high quality work here. Um, so to get this out, I did have to remove, there's like two plastic poles or bars or braces or whatever they are. I think they're probably braces. It was a little white brace like this. Um, I did break one. I popped one out on the other side to release it because, um, I really wanted to not only show the motor, but I wanted to oil this thing just to make sure that, and grease it to make sure that we're 
making some good, uh, uh, making some appropriate <laughs> uh, lubrication for this. This feels really, really smooth, really happy with this quality. Um, and I didn't know what to expect from this car. Uh, actually, it feels like the guide is sprung. Oh, yeah, the guide is sprung as well. That's, um, that's, that's very cool as well. I really do like this. They put a lot of thought into this car, obviously. I do wish they would make the body screws or the, the interior chassis screw because the, the, this chassis piece screws into these posts right here. And then not only does that screw that down, but it kind of traps the motor in here as well. Because this area right here, right there, kind of sits across the motor, kind of holds it down. Um, yeah, well, anyway, so I really wish they would have thought about uh, not putting the interior detail in there. That And this screw, you kind of have to come in it from the side because there's this piece of the body here. Or piece of the uh, the the air intake, I guess this would be. Yeah, this would be an air intake. I'm assuming. Um, this kind of blocks this screw, which I'm assuming the plate is put down. It's screwed down, and then all the stuff is put on top of it. So yeah, I mean it's it's an assembly issue. It's not an issue unless you want to take the car apart, and it becomes an issue. Um, it's not a criticism necessarily of the way that they've done it. I do wish they would have considered uh, people that, you know, would want to take the car apart and uh, service it, make sure everything's good here. So uh, I'm going to grease this. I'm going to reassemble it. Before I get it on the track, I'm going to put it on the magnet marshal to uh, get a weight and get a downforce because I'm sure this open can, um, given a little bit of downforce, it feels like it. Um, it definitely, there is no magnet in here, right? No, it feels like there's a lot of downforce here, which, um, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> okay, as promised, weight, 99 grams. That's pretty heavy, but, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, it definitely, it's not a lightweight car. There's a huge interior in there, so let's get a magnetic downforce on this, shall we? 59 grams of downforce. The 60 grams of downforce. No, wait, 53, 63, hold on. Let's get it settled here. 55, 46, kind of moving it around, I think, because the 67. Yeah, it's where the, the motor is. I mean, there's definitely quite a bit of uh, magnetic downforce here, um, which should um, should really help this thing go. Definitely have some connection issues here because I didn't fluff the braid properly. Need to get that braid a little more, a little more fluffed out there. Uh, I did lose the um, the rear mud flaps, but whatever. I really don't care. They're still in the box. I could put them back on if I wanted to. No big deal. Much better. Yeah, those are the first couple laps I did with it. Um, this car is uh, solid. <laughs> Feels great. Uh, I think because of the, um, I think because of the mag, the magnetic downforce, um, it's not that fast on the straightaway. Yeah, uh, and maybe because of the four-wheel drive. I mean, I am only at nine volts. I know nine volts, um, but it feels fantastic in the corners. Uh, I can really throw it around. It really is connected, and uh, these are the first laps I've done, and I'm not going off at all. 
which I think is a testament to the solidity of the car and how planted it is. And the magnetic downforce. Um, this car feels really good. Man. So what do we have here? We have a really nicely detailed, really solid performing, uh, beautiful little car. <laughs> That's pretty much the verdict. Um, this car is incredibly easy to drive. Uh, it, I mean, I, I'm at nine volts, okay? So yes, I'll, I'm prepared to say uh, I need to turn the voltage up and it's the magnet that's helping me all of that. But still, this car is not only fantastic looking, it's excellent value for money. Should you buy this car? Well, if you're into Lancia's, I mean, this has probably got to be at the top of your list. If you're into rally cars, also. If you're not into either of those, I mean, it, it's, it's a great performing car that's going to feel like you've spent your money well so should you buy it well i think you should um if you really don't like rally then no but um all things being equal you're gonna get a really good car <laughs> uh thanks to src for sending me the car i really appreciate it and thanks everybody for watching see you all again soon.